Today on Fix My Oculus, we're going to fix the fan on a Quest 3. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If it's your first time here, please do consider subscribing for more VR-related content like this. And if you get a chance to like the video and share it with a friend that may need help with this issue, that always helps the channel and helps other people learn how to fix their VRs and resolve issues. I've been repairing MetaQuest 3s really since they first came out. When they first released, we did a live stream and tore it down in front of everybody so that we could see exactly what was going on inside of it. And since then, we've noticed that there are a handful of things that happen to these little units that they're just prone to. Uh, one of them is the speaker arms being damaged. That just seems to happen a lot because of the way that the mounting ring that sits on the inside of the speaker arm is engineered. It just does not hold up to strain and stress. So when people pull these speaker arms off or when they've got a head strap that's just stuck on there real good, they just, they just break it off. One of the other issues that we see a lot is fan related issues. The fan design for these units is not too dissimilar from previous models, but there is one thing that really makes them more prone to wear and tear. And that's this big opening at the top here. Unlike the Quest 2 within the headset, there's nothing really shielding this opening from debris. So things have a tendency to get uh, stuck inside there. And that can be anything from just normal dust and things that get inside the headset because they're sucked in through the ventilation. And then we've noticed that there's a couple screws that sit up top on the headset inside, and those have a tendency to uh, get loose and fall out. So I'm gonna do a quick overview of how to tear this down and get to a point where we can inspect the fan and see if it's just obstructed or if it's damaged. You will need a couple tools for this job. I always recommend a Phillips screwdriver. The uh, PH00 bit seems to work best for the Quest 3 and all the screws that are inside it. If you need a screwdriver set that has all the bits that you need for VR repair, whether that's the Quest 2, Quest 3, or Quest 3S, you can get that on our website. And the other tools that I like to use for pretty much every repair is just a good set of tweezers and a little pry tool here because it comes in handy for getting the faceplate off and for getting this uh, silicone gasket out of place. We're going to start by taking our pry tool and wedging it between the silicone and the plastic eye cowlings here. And I'm just going to go all the way around to release those clips. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we can just pull at the seam here. Just get my finger there between the plastic and the silicone again. And pull that straight out. I'll do the same on the other side. And I'm going to take my pry tool again and I'm going to release the clips at the nose. And we're going to release the clips at the top. And then I'm going to take my finger here and just pop the clip that sits at the bridge of the nose and the whole thing comes out. Next, I'm gonna take my screwdriver here and we're gonna take out all the screws that hold in the faceplate. We've got one here, one there, one down here, one at the nose, and then three on the opposite side, seven screws in total. Felt a little bit dark in here, so I went ahead and turned on some lights. The two in the corners are a little harder to reach, so if you're using a screwdriver set like mine, you will need an extender just to reach down in there. They do make screwdrivers that are a little bit narrower, but I just like the screwdriver so much that it's worth it for me to use the extender. And now I've got all my screws out, so I can lift up from the bottom here. And don't lift up too hard because we've got these ribbons that we have to be mindful of. So just lift it up gently, and then we're gonna take our pry tool, and we're gonna unclip these clips at the top. There's one, and two. And now we can fold this down this way. And then I can take my pry tool here, and I can I can already tell, it was hard to hear, there was just a second there where you could just hear a screw. Let's see if I can get that again. But I unlocked it with my pry tool, and now, since I know that there's a screw in there, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's definitely a screw in there because I can hear it, and even if I can't see it, I know that it's this screw, because it's missing, see? These two screws, for some reason, I don't know if they just weren't machined correctly, or if they require some some Loctite in there that just wasn't applied correctly from the factory. But this is a real issue on the MetaQuest 3s that I don't feel like Meta's addressed. Could be this one, could be this one. It's it's both of those screws that hold this in. And, and I would say probably 50% of people who send in fan repairs to us really just have an obstruction in the fan caused by one of these screws falling out. Sometimes it's dirt and debris. Sometimes it's the fact that the fan has failed, but the fans just don't really fail that much. Most of the time, or I, I would say at least half the time, it's, it's an obstruction. So we need to take off the bracket that has the Bluetooth antenna here, and this is kind of where our tweezers come into play because none of the screws that hold this bracket in uh, can be magnetized. They're all a non-ferrous type of screw, so we have to use tweezers to grab them, otherwise they just fall over the place. 
And sometimes they fall all over the place anyway, because these screws down here at the bottom are really short and your ability to grab onto them is, is somewhat limited. And I've got all those screws undone, so I'm just gonna pull up on this bracket here, and then we're just going to gently lift and pull that Bluetooth antenna connection away. And then we'll remove this white plastic bracket at the top here. Now we've got three screws that hold the fan in, and again, these are all just Phillips double zero screws. This one at the bottom is magnetic, which is nice because it's hard to reach down there. And then this fan connection just kind of pulls straight out like that. And then there's our screw. I like to go through these fans and just kind of check for bent blades because sometimes that does happen. As long as none of the blades are bent, just visually inspecting it, then that fan's usually probably fine. But sometimes these blades are messed up and, and at that point I would just replace that fan. So what I'm gonna do is now that I've taken the screw out, I'm gonna put the fan back in, grab this end with my tweezers. It's colorful side up, black side down, and we're just gonna go straight into that connection. And then I don't need to turn the headset all the way on to confirm the fan is working. Usually I can just plug the headset in and the fan will spin. There it is. And so I don't wanna test and make sure that the fan is working, so we'll go ahead and turn the headset on. Testing these fans is a little different than testing the Quest 2 fans, uh, just in the sense that they don't respond immediately. They kind of wait for the headset to warm up a little bit before they kick on the Quest 2 fans. They just kick on right away. I can always tell whether Quest owners have dogs or cats, by the way. Burning up my daylight here. So it's been about eight minutes here and I've still not seen this fan really kick on even though it did indicate that it's going to get power. So I'm going to try swapping in another fan and seeing if we get a better result. Because the heatsink here is warm but we're still not getting any, any cooling from the fan. Now we'll try again. There it goes. That's what it's supposed to do. Fan's kicking on and it's running. So even though there's nothing visually wrong with this fan, there is something wrong with the motor. And even though it's getting power and kind of indicating that it may work or at least gets power, it's not doing its job as a cooling fan. So now that we've replaced that, we can go ahead and start putting our screws back in. And we gotta get this plastic bracket back on, so we'll go ahead and screw that down. And then because by nature I am a bit of a nervous Nelly, we're gonna put a little bit of tape over those screws to keep them from falling out ever again. It does kind of feel like one of those things Meta should have done, but that's okay. Alrighty, now we can go ahead and put our Bluetooth bracket back on. I kind of like to start with the long screws that hold things in place. That just seems to make it easier to line up the bottom screws. And then we're gonna take this antenna connection here and just line it up and press it down. And it should just pop right on there. And everything's secured now, so we can just go ahead and close this back up. When we're closing this, make sure that these ribbons don't get caught up between the face shield and the bezel here. We need to kind of tuck these in to make sure that they don't get squished. And then we'll start at the top here with our screws that hold the faceplate back in. And again, we will need our extender to get those hard to reach screws. Luckily, these ones are magnetic, so it's easier to fish them in there. Don't need tweezers to go all the way down. And then we can take our silicone face shield and put that back on. I do this in uh, basically reverse order. I like to put the bridge of the nose in first and then kind of clip the top and then clip the bottom. And then I'll do the eyes. Sometimes it's easy to move this IPD in. Then just go all the way around, all the way around, and then just make sure that all the clips around the edge are properly seated. Perfect. All right, and that unit is pretty good to go. Fan's working and we're not overheating anymore. Fan turns on when I turn it on. I did notice this when we were doing the repair, so I'll probably reach out to the customer and see if they want me to replace that. But other than that, that unit is fixed. If you guys do need replacement fans like this, we do carry these on our website, fixmyoculus.com. And if you guys need parts or tools for your repair, you can get those on our website as well. I appreciate you guys sticking around for the whole video, and I hope you learned something. If you haven't had a chance to like and subscribe, please uh, consider doing so. It really helps us out, helps the channel grow, and hopefully people out there who are having issues with their VRs and don't have the answers that they need can come find those from us here. But anyway, that's really all I got for you guys today. So we will see you on the next one.